So here we are looking at the three-dimensional coordinate system. Now I want you to note as we begin that three dimensions or R3 or space is simply a natural extension of two dimensions. So looking at this illustration here, we see our familiar XY plane. So the three-dimensional coordinate system is created by adding a new axis called the z-axis to our familiar rectangular coordinate system. Now this new z-axis is intersected through the origin perpendicular to both the x and y axes. So here we go. We are incorporating the new axis, our z-axis here, through the origin. So here is z. And now because we have incorporated this new axis, we need to change the origin accordingly. So this is still the origin point, but we need to add a z component to this. So this point is now defined as 0, 0, 0. And we call this an ordered triplet. So whereas we had ordered pairs in R2, we now have ordered triplets in R3. So an arbitrary ordered triplet would be defined as x, y, z in R3. So looking back at our illustration and starting at that origin, if we begin at the origin and move above the x, y plane, notice how you're moving in a positive z direction versus Again, if we start here at the origin and move below the xy plane, you're moving in a negative z direction. So let's now take some time to think about how are we going to plot ordered triplets in space. So what I want to do here is suppose we want to plot some arbitrary point. So suppose we want to plot the ordered triplet defined as xyz is equal to abc. And this, of course, is such that A, B, and C are real numbers. There are scalar values. So how are we going to do this? Well, beginning at the origin, we want to move out A units in the X direction. We then want to move out B units in the Y direction. And last but not least, we'll move C units in the Z direction. So let's take a look. Again, we are beginning here at the origin. And from the origin, we are moving out A units in the X direction. So here is that shift of A units in the X direction. From here, we're going to move out B units in the Y direction. So this is our shift of B units in the Y direction. And last but not least, from here, we want to shift C units in the Z direction. And this allows us to attain the ordered triplet X, Y, Z defined by A, B, C. So we now want to take some time to consider the coordinate planes in space. So I want to begin by noting that the coordinate plane containing the X and Y axis is still called the X, Y plane. But in addition to our familiar xy plane, we now have two new coordinate planes. We also have the xz plane as well as the yz plane. So let's take a closer look at these planes. So the xy plane, again, we'll keep in mind here that this plane contains the x and y axes. But because this is a plane in space, it's extending infinitely in all directions. So keep in mind here that while my sketches are in two dimensions, so they look finite, these are extending infinitely in all directions. So here is our xy plane. We know and love from two dimensions. And now in three dimensions, we define this using the equation z is equal to zero. So let's now think about the xz plane. So here we'll keep in mind that the xz plane contains the x-axis and the z-axis. But again, because this is a plane, it is extending 
infinitely in all directions. So here is an illustration of our beautiful XZ plane. And we'll define this equation or this plane using the equation y is equal to zero. And last but not least, we want to consider the yz plane. And we'll keep in mind here that the yz plane contains the y-axis and the z-axis. But we know because this is a plane, it's extending infinitely in all directions. So here is our beautiful yz plane. And now we define the yz plane using the equation x is equal to zero. Now when we take these three planes and incorporate them on top of each other, we realize that this three-dimensional space is being divided into eight pieces. And we call these eight pieces or these eight regions octants. So to help us better understand the eight regions that the X, Y, and Z coordinate system is divided into, let's begin by thinking about the four quadrants of the X, Y plane that we are familiar with. So here's our X, Y plane. We have the X and Y axes. So here is Y, here is X, and of course we have the origin at the center. And we know that this xy plane is divided into four quadrants. So here is quadrant one, here is quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. So these four quadrants are still in space, but they're only the first four of eight total. So let's take a closer look. So here is space. We have our x axis, we have our y axis. And now, we can still see these quadrants that are above. If we incorporate the positive z-axis, we can visualize these four quadrants, or the first four octants. So the first four octants are above the xy plate. So here is your first octant, one, two, three, and four. So we'll make a little note to ourselves here that the first four octants are above the xy plane. And the one that we're going to work the most with this semester is the first octant. So that's where everything is positive. So I'm highlighting this region here, our first octant. So we'll make a note that the first octant is defined in set notation as follows. We say that the first octant is the set of all ordered triplets, x, y, z, such that x is greater than zero, y is greater than zero, and z is greater than zero. So then what about the remaining four? Because we know that there are eight total. Well, if the first four octants are above the xy plane, the remaining four octants are below the xy plane. So again, we'll start by thinking about here is our xy plane. So we have the x and y axes. And from the origin, we can now incorporate the negative z axis. So this is still z, but we'll remind ourselves that this is moving in that negative z direction, so below the xy plane. And so here we can see the remaining four octants. We have our fifth octant, our sixth octant, the seventh octant, and the eighth octant. So the fifth through eighth octants are below the xy plane. 